Hello, I have been playing table tennis for 10 years now and given what I understand now about the sport and learning in general, if I had a chance to start from scratch again, how would I go about it? This series will be a way of answering that question. In this introductory video, I will motivate some things and set the expectations for what we will cover. You might wonder, why is there a need to learn the strokes? With all the stuff that we saw and learned in the previous series, can't you just figure out your own strokes? You could, but not only would it take you a lot of time, but there are many things that we haven't accounted for. For example, when you're playing a match, you're not just playing one stroke, you're playing a sequence of them. And not every ideal version could actually be executed repeatedly within the limitations of a human body. So yeah, that makes finding the optimum a lot more complicated. Well, we could at least learn the strokes that have been obtained after the trial and error of generations of players. Compared to 50 years ago, the way strokes are played in table tennis has changed quite a lot. To give an analogy, consider something that you do with ease, writing. One could argue that, hey, if you know what the letter looks like, then you can write it. But you still spend years learning how to write. Because when you're going to be writing pages, then the speed matters. I mean, try writing with your non-dominant hand and you'll see what I mean. And maybe in the English alphabet, the stroke order may not seem that important, but there are definitely scripts where it matters. But wait, some of you could say, I play table tennis for fun with my friends and family members. I don't want it to turn into something where there's a right or a wrong way to hit the ball. What I have right now is enough for me. I just like having fun. I get it. I appreciate that outlook. And look, you can close this video right away. If you're still here though, I'll just say that learning the strokes properly, of course, helped me to beat better players. But it also immensely increased the fun I feel while playing or practicing. Great, you're on board. Let's do this. So we're going to be covering these four strokes. Counter, push, block, and topspin. In that order. Personally, I started off with push, but I think this order works better. With each stroke, I'll assume that you're starting from scratch and build up that stroke in levels. If you're not a beginner, then you can join along at the level that fits you. And if you're someone who's picked up a weird action, then unfortunately that's a little more tricky, but I'll make a video towards the very end that will talk about how you could attempt to change your action. Why levels? What do you mean by that? It is easy to get stuck on plateaus in table tennis, where you try to implement a seemingly simple instruction, but you either get it or you struggle over there for a long time because it's too big of a leap from where you currently are. With these levels, I'd be attempting to break some of the bigger steps into smaller chunks, kind of like progressions in calisthenics. I'll try my best to motivate each level and give you an objective way to measure if you're ready for the next level. Hopefully this will help you to be sincere to the goal at hand. This will be a roadmap and although I'll give some pointers that were helpful for me, I will avoid going into explicit details. There are already some very good tutorial videos that do that and I'll share the link for some of them wherever appropriate. Oh, there'll also be some fun advanced levels where we'll explore some directions in which you could take the stroke and make it your own. Okay, before the next video, here are some prerequisites. You should have a decent table tennis bat, as in, if you drop the ball like this, it should bounce back a little bit. And when you attempt to drag the ball across the rubber, the ball should rotate and not skid. It shouldn't be that expensive. I started off with a GKI Kung Fu, which was like around a thousand rupees. Next, you should know how to hold the bat in a shake hand grip. And lastly, you should have someone that you can practice with. This last step probably is the most difficult for some of you and I can understand. And wherever possible, I will explain how you could do some drills using a robot or like a return board. But largely, you will need another human to practice with. Maybe you come across some new friends this way. And with that, I'll see you in the next video on forehand counter.
Let me know if you have any suggestions or questions in the comments below.